Good evening, Vancouver. Welcome back to Canucks After Dark, folks. I am in shambles right now. I hope we are live. I hope everything is working. Um, my camera and everything shut down on me completely, um, and I have no idea why. So I think we're live. I'm trying to check to make sure that we're good. It looks like we are. Uh, my mic went out in testing, too. So who knows if it's going to work or not. By the way, uh, my name is Parker. Unfortunately, Clay cannot be with me tonight. Uh, if this audio cuts out, I will have to swap, and hopefully we're okay. Uh, but Clay could not be with us tonight. He was at the game, so we are going to be riding solo tonight, as the great Jason Derulo once said. Let me just get a little bit organized here. Uh, I thought I was going to have to use the laptop camera, but I was able to get it hooked up to the right machine. Uh, and I am, it's 10.30. I'm well ahead of schedule, or well after schedule. Let me get this flashlight off. Um, folks, the Vancouver Canucks have won nine games. I mean, what, what else can I say to start this off? The Vancouver Canucks have won nine out of their 12 games so far this season. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's so fantastic, by the way, that they've never done this before. <laughs> they have never in their history been nine, two, and one. They have never won nine out of their first 12 games. They have, they just haven't done it. They've been eight, two, and one twice in their history. Both of those times, they lost their 12th game of the year. But in a game that looked like the Edmonton Oilers were going to be a tough team to beat. Because look, on paper, you can talk about their bad performance all year so far, all you want, right? Their defense has been bad. Their goaltending has been bad. I mean, I can't argue that. But they looked really, really good to start this game off. They were, uh, they had the first 19 out of the first 21 shots. The shots were 19 to 2 in this game against the Oilers, uh, or this game against the Canucks the, for the Oilers. And they, the Canucks found a way to battle back and win it. Now, I'm not going to spend this whole time talking about the Oilers game. I did just make a video about it. So if you'd like to, uh, if you, if you'd like to watch my full deep breakdown uh, on this game, uh, my video is up. By the way, Carol, can I pull this up on screen? Will it let me? Will it let me? Carol, gifting 10 Canucks After Dark memberships. Thank you so much, Carol. Uh, we really appreciate it. Clay appreciates too. Unfortunately, he is not here, but thank you very much. Jacob's asking, where is Clay? Um, oh, can I turn up the background music? Sorry. I, I can't hear it because it's on a different thing. Very sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Chi, for, for making that call. Uh, Clay was at the game. He was hosting somebody, so we couldn't make it onto here after. Um, so I am, uh, I'm riding solo, which is, uh, I mean, I've, I've been here before. We've done this before. Um, so as always, we're going to spend a little bit of time breaking down the four Canucks games this week. The four wins, by the way, 4-0. and on the week for the Canucks. I'm just pulling all of them up right now. Uh, we're going to try to keep it a little bit quick. It's already 1030 and want to keep this maybe like a 40 to 45 minute show, especially on my own. So we're going to break down the four games. We'll preview the ones coming up. We'll talk about how this team has done this, right? What is different that is making this team win hockey games? And, uh, and is it sustainable, right? Can they keep this up through the entirety of the season? It's a, it's a tough question, but it's one that we have to ask. Uh, obviously they're not going to, you know, be a, they're not going to be a nine out of 12 win team the whole way. Right. What would that be? That would be like, it'd be like 60 wins. They're not going to do that. Um, but it'd be more than that. Um, but we will, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go, let's break down those previous games. Let's give a quick chat about them. And, and we'll start with last Tuesday, Halloween night, uh, Canucks against the predators. Uh, they took it to the predators the previous week. Uh, and they came out and uh, and had a pretty solid performance. Uh, it's a 5-2 win um, in which Thatcher Demko stopped. Uh, how many shots did Demko stop? Demko stopped 27 of 29 shots. This was sort of the start of his, his fantastic stretch over the course of the week. Um, you have a Sam Lafferty goal to kick things off. And then the Canucks, the Canucks did give up, uh, you know, they gave up a couple in the first period. They gave up the lead. Uh, but what did they do? They bounced back. And that's been their, their thing so much lately this year is, is the second period bounce backs um, going down to one. Uh, and then Elias Patterson scores less than a minute into the second period. And then he scores again uh, on the power play late in the second to give the Canucks the lead. And they never look back. JT Miller added one. Elias Patterson added one to make it five, two. It's a hat trick for Elias Patterson on the empty net. He was not missing the empty net this time. 
Um, so just to, you know, I, I, again, this game was a week ago. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but it's the start of their winning streak. It, it was a game against a team that they should beat and coming off of, you know, a loss, uh, and they haven't had many of those this year. Um, but coming off of a loss to the Rangers in which I thought that was one of their better games of the season where they won, you know, they won, the, they won three straight games, Panthers, Preds, Blues, and then they lose to the Rangers on the second night of a back to back. Uh, and it, you know, they looked really good, like very good. And they lost that game in OT. So they come out and what do they do? They, they bounce right back. They didn't sulk from that game. They just bounced right back, brought it to the Preds, uh, and pretty solidly won five, two, uh, Viper saying it's, it was the JT Miller benching game. I forgot about that. That feels like, that feels like so much more recent than that. Uh, but yeah, this is the game that Rick Tockett benched JT Miller for the, uh, for the end of the second period. Right. Um, and what does he do? He comes out five minutes into the second or five minutes into the third and he scores, you know, talk it, put him on the bench and, and Miller didn't sulk about it. He didn't sit there and be like, ah, I'm, I'm frustrated. Things are going my way. He was frustrated. He took a penalty. He, he wasn't playing great. Um, but he sat down, he calmed down and he came out and he played really well the rest of the game. JT Miller this week. Um, I know Quinn Hughes is the first star of the week and all that stuff. And we'll get to that. JT Miller has been fantastic lately and it's not just offensively his two way game you know he's earning that paycheck that he's getting because based on his play you know 99 points that one year and, and 80 something last year that's all fine and good but he was a liability defensively and, and it wasn't necessarily a skill thing but it was it was an effort issue in my mind but he has been so good lately uh in all facets of the ice and uh getting rewarded in that one uh getting uh and yes getting benched absolutely um, let's go game two. Let's go the fun game. Uh, this is one where I, I don't even, I don't even know where to, where to go on this. Cause the Canucks beat the Sharks 10 one. I mean, it, it was bad. And I thought this was bad, but then the Sharks allowed 10 goals to the Penguins like two nights later. That's a tough scene. If you're the San Jose Sharks. Uh, so either way, um, the Canucks just come out firing. We get a Brock Besser goal early on. We get uh, a JT Miller goal, uh, two power play goals, four minutes into this game uh, for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, Quinn Hughes has a wrist shot that gets through for his fourth of the season. Brock Besser tips one in on the power play to end the first period. The shots in the first period were 15 to six for the Canucks over the Sharks in this one. And there's people tweeting. like, I think it was Mr. Booth. He was like, we want 10. Let's get 10 in this one. And everyone's like, ha Yeah, let's get 10. That would be funny. Uh, they got 10. They got 10. Uh, the The Sharks couldn't get a save. Neither of their goalies could get a save. I mean, I think it was... Uh, <laughs> let me just pull up the box score here. Because they put in uh, Capo Kakinen to start this game. And everyone was thinking, wow, it's kind of a weird choice. Mackenzie Blackwood has historically sort of owned the Canucks, right? Uh, but they put in they put in Kakinen. All's fine and good. Uh, he allows six goals on 19 shots. So they put in Blackwood and he allows four goals on 14 shots. Uh, just just tough from the Sharks goalies second period after the Canucks put up four in the first they put up four more in the second we have a uh, Mikheyev goal uh, as he's starting to put the puck in the net Kuzmenko uh, gets his third Lafferty gets his third by the way Sam Lafferty I keep going on about Sam Lafferty but the Leafs gave him up so they could grab Ryan Reeves how's that going for you Toronto I mean sure they had that big win today after going down 4-1 but man Ryan Reeves has not been an impact player and he hasn't been for a long time uh, he's, he's not helping to mitigate, uh, hits like when Lilligren got hurt, uh, by Marchand, he yeah, just like, thank you. Thank you, Toronto for Mr. Lafferty. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, Pew Suter gets his first of the year in this one. And then Bavillier gets two nice little garbage goals. <laughs> uh, just the ninth and 10th goal of the game. And sometimes that's all you need, right? He's in a bit of a slump. He hasn't been producing. Um, he hasn't, he hasn't scored all year. You know, this was their 10th game of the year. And sometimes you just need a, a bit of luck, right? You go out there, you score the ninth and 10th goal of the game against the worst team in hockey. And maybe you can build off that, right? He didn't really carry that forward um, to the, you know, the following two games. I don't know if he even got a point tonight. No, he didn't. Uh, he, he's re he really needs to do better, um, but it's nice to see him at least get on the board. And then Zetterlin scores with about three, three and a half minutes left because Demko was interfered with. Uh, and Rick Tockett took the high road and did not challenge for goalie interference with four minutes left. So Demko doesn't get the shutout, but it was deserved as a shutout. 
uh, and he should have got one, but he didn't. So 10 ones, the final in that game. Uh, and that one kind of sucks. Cause you know, you look at the first two periods, so it's for 15, six, then 10 to seven, just absolute domination. Then score effects catch up in the third, right? The Canucks are, aren't playing their top guys. They're taking it a bit easy. The sharks put up 18 shots in the third period and that, that broke Demko's shutout. So I would have liked to see them finish through, finish strong. Um, but what this game allowed them to do is play Quinn Hughes, 18 minutes, play Elias Pettersson, 14 and a half minutes. JT Miller played 15 minutes. Besser played 15 minutes. Stadnika got to play 17. Pew Suter, the top man on forwards, had 19 minutes and 42 seconds against the Sharks. And all the defense were within three minutes of each other, of ice time, three and a half minutes or so. They got to just basically rest everybody, right? Fantastic. Fantastic. So uh, that's big. They gave them a little bit of rest, allowed them to get some, some depth guys going through. And then you had, on Saturday night, the their toughest game of the season so far. Right. Okay. Maybe the maybe the Rangers were, were the toughest one of the season at that point. Stars are a tougher opponent, especially right now. The Stars have come out hot uh, on a fantastic start to the season. Uh, I think they were seven, two, and one going in this game, something along those lines. Maybe. Yeah. I think that was right. Uh, and the Canucks, I think, were six, two, and one. Does that add up? No, it doesn't add up. They were seven, two, and one. Uh, either way, two teams that were, ba- maybe they were seven, one, and one the Stars at that point. Um, but the Stars came into this one. They lost again today. That's why. Yeah, they were 7-1-1. So they had a better record than the Canucks because they had one fewer loss. Um, this was going to be a tough one for the Canucks. Hockey Night in Canada, but they're at home. And they just outworked the Dallas Stars. I'll be honest. I didn't watch most of this game. I was busy. That's why I didn't have a video after this game. Uh, so I'd love to go a little bit deeper into it. But unfortunately, I really just watched the highlights. Um, you have Pew Suter getting his second of the year. You have Elias Pettersson getting his sixth. Uh, both in the second period, the Canucks in second periods have been so, so good. I mean, you look at the shots in this one, 13 to eight Dallas in the first 14 to five Vancouver in the second, they score their two goals and they hang on Thatcher Demko, a 27 save shutout. I mean, what are we doing here? Thatcher Demko has a 948 save percentage on the year after tonight's game. That is so fantastic that I don't even I don't even know what, what to say about it. Like like Thatcher Demko has been an absolute rock. You look at the Canucks expected goals and and like yeah at five on five they're technically being outplayed expected goals wise and you know this isn't gonna last. They're gonna regress. Sure they are gonna regress. I don't think they're gonna regress as much as some people might think they will. And again I'm usually a pretty analytics guy but this team just looks a lot different than they have historically. Um the fact is that Thatcher Demko is is an absolute stud in the pipes right now. And Casey DeSmith, when he's getting put in, he's also been fantastic. They're not going to get 948 save percentage goaltending all year. They're just not. Demko will regress. However, how far will he regress? Right? We've seen goalies put up 925s. I, I don't know if Demko's that. We've been hoping Demko would be that for quite a while, and maybe he's showing it now. I'm a little scared to think that that's going to be how it goes the rest of the way, but he's hot right now. And the Canucks are at a point where it doesn't really matter how you win them. If you get a big enough lead early enough in the season, I mean, you're going to run away with things. We'll get to the standings after we talk about this Oilers game a little bit more. Let's jump to that now. Uh, But yeah, that Stars game was a statement. That Stars game was an absolute statement. National TV just go out and they just took it to the Stars. Fantastic. Uh, And then, yeah, this game, uh, I mean, Edmonton dominated the first, you know, seven, eight minutes. Shots were 19 to two. Canucks just go score. Quinn Hughes fires one, gets it through. Pew Suter scores two minutes later. And then one minute later, uh, one and a half minutes later, Brock Besser scores. In the span of three and a half minutes, the Canucks score three goals and essentially put this game away because Edmonton can't defend and their their goaltending just isn't there. The bounce back that we saw from the Canucks in this game, like I mentioned, the shots were 19 to two at one point. They ended up 42 to 36. In the second period, the Canucks evened the shots up at one point. Like what an absolute tenacious comeback to not give up when a team is taking it to you to go out and just keep working, knowing, Hey, we just, you know, Demko held us in it. He allowed one goal on 19 shots. If we can just bounce back and get some pucks through, we can beat this team. We've done it twice. We beat them eight one. We hung on in a game where they dominated. We beat them in our second game of the season. And what do they do? They score. They put up six on the Oilers because they, they can't defend and they can't have goaltending. Um, I mean, what a, what a fantastic game. 
for the Canucks. So yeah, they put up a three spot in the first period. Uh, they have that dry sidle goal to start the second that probably shouldn't have counted. Uh, I mean, Demko played the puck and he stood there behind the net. Hey, he didn't make an effort to get back to his net, but he was standing there and he got tripped, right? Um, the guys skate around him. Demko technically has a right to that ice. He's a player. Uh, he's allowed to stand there if he wants. And if someone sweeps his leg out, it's probably tripping. Um, and they do end up scoring. Technically, according to the letter of the law, goalie interference does not require you to be in the crease. It's interference with a goalie anywhere. Um, but they decided not to challenge. And I get why. I don't think it would have been overturned because the rest of them are like, well, he wasn't in his crease. He wasn't even trying to get in his crease. Sure, he got taken out. Sure, maybe it was regular interference or regular tripping. That's not something you can challenge for. So we're not going to do anything about that. That's sort of where my thought lies in in where they're in why uh, talk it didn't challenge it, but the Canucks answered right back. Hoaglander scores uh, and a great play by Niels Hoaglander here, chipping the puck out of the zone. Uh, Evan Bouchard just loses his assignment. It's a two on one the other way that Hoaglander or two on two, but that Hoaglander jumps in to make it a three on two because Evan Bouchard is slow to come back in. Lafferty's shot is stopped. The puck goes right to Hoaglander. He just roofs it. I mean, what a goal! For Niels Hoaglander. He's got three. I think he only had three all of last year. So 12 games in, Hoaglander is looking a lot better. Um, and I think he's playing better than his stat line shows. Um, I mean, what does he have? He's got three goals, two assists. So five points in 11 games. He's a plus seven. That's great. Uh, and I, I like he's I feel like he's just close. Like he's so close to just getting over that edge. Um, he's playing really well. I, I just think a little bit more can go his way and, and he'll turn into a pretty solid player, especially you know, third line. With Lafferty, like that's that's a that's a good combo. Lafferty and, and Suter and Hoaglander, that's I'm loving it. I, I'm absolutely loving it. Um, so he makes it four two. Again, shots in the second period, uh, seventeen to nine in favor of the Canucks, dominating second periods after being so bad at them early in the year. We go to the third period. JT Miller scores. He gets his seventh of the year, uh, just on an absolute rocket from the point. And this is after McDavid and Drysital get frustrated. McDavid should have had a penalty on JT Miller. And then he goes and just takes out Pew Suter for shooting the puck at the net and not scoring. He just goes and cross checks Pew Suter. So he goes to the box for two. Dry Seidel goes to the box for 10. And that's really tough, right? When you two of the top five players in the world essentially are in the penalty box uh, while you're down two goals with 12, 13 minutes to go. I mean, how are you going to come back, right? JT Miller goes out, rips one through. Uh, no one even saw it go in except Connor Garland. He celebrated. He told the ref, hey, that's in, that's in. And then the horn went. Uh, and then Canucks get that late power play, and Rick Tockett puts the top unit out with like a minute and 20 seconds to go. What a petty move from Rick Tockett, and I love it. Because Jay Woodcroft had just been ejected. Uh, McDavid had voiced that he was like frustrated. Remember that eight, one game when he was like, oh, you're putting your, your top guys out there, yada, yada, yada. And you're putting PP one out there when it's eight to one. And it, he, they weren't, they put Sam Lafferty out there in that game. Uh, I remember that vividly, uh, but he was like, you know, Connor McDavid was, was frustrated about how they put PP one out in that eight, one blowout. So what does Rick Tockett do in a, in a five, two game with a minute to go? He's like, yeah, PP one, get over the boards. And they go score a really nice little tic-tac-toe Hughes to PD back door to Brock Besser. He gets his 10th goal of the year. Second of the night. He's got six goals against Edmonton. I mean, Brock Besser is the Oilers killer now. It's fantastic. Um, so that makes it 6-2. Love that from Tockett. Um, yeah, I, I mean, just what a game. What a game from the Canucks tonight. Uh, and what a week. The Canucks were 5-2-1 and one when we did our show last week. And we said, wow, that's good, right? Like, hey, that's that's they're playing really well. And I think Clay and I each predicted maybe two, one, and one on the week. They'd win two. And I think I might have said three and one because I was trying to be a little optimistic. And I said, hey, they probably lose to the stars. But I think they beat the Oilers, the Preds, and the Sharks. But in my in my in my heart, I was thinking they probably only win two. And they proved me wrong. And not, these games weren't close. Five, two, ten, one, two, nothing, six, two. The Canucks scored 23 goals. Since the last time that we did a podcast, 23 goals and they allowed five, 23 to five goal differential in the last four games. The Canucks have the best goal differential in the league and it's not even close. They have a plus 30. They have scored more than double the goals they've allowed. 54 goals for 24 goals against. Uh, what a start. You, you literally just, I mean, there's nothing else you can say. They've allowed uh, except for the Bruins, the fewest goals 
in hockey. The Bruins have allowed 23. The Canucks have allowed 24. They've also scored more goals than anybody. Vegas has 52. The Canucks have 54. This team is on fire right now. I don't know how sustainable it is. I don't, I, I like, I don't, I don't know if like, if they're not going to be this record, but you look at the lead that they have built, right? They have a eight point gap on wildcard two, or I guess the team below wildcard two, right? They haven't, they have an eight point playoff buffer, just 12 games into the year. That is so big for when we get farther down the line, they're not, ha- they're not going to play. They're not going to be playing catch up, right? They are, they're in the driver's seat. They control their own destiny coming into this game tonight. Coming into this game tonight, the Canucks, the Athletic has the Canucks projected at 101 points, 87% chance of making the playoffs. I mean, where was this team the last few years? They are, they look so different. They have been so fantastic. And yeah, we look at, let's look at the standings. The Vegas Golden Knights are 11, one and one. I mean, good for them. The Canucks are four points back with a game in hand. I mean, they're really, they're really not far that far back of Vegas. Um, they have a four point lead on Dallas at the top of the central Dallas has a game in hand. Either way, they just beat Dallas Kings have 16 points in 11 games. They've been playing really well. The ducks surprisingly seven, four and oh, but we don't know how long that'll last. Right. I mean, the ducks, we haven't thought of as a, as a real contender. Um, the athletic has the ducks at just a 7% chance of making the playoffs. They, they don't think this is sustainable, right? So if we think that the ducks are going to fall off and I think they will, let's say we have, Vegas, Vancouver, LA, and Seattle are the ones that are sort of in the mix. But again, the athletic thinks Seattle is going to fall off too. They have a 13% chance. So it needs to be essentially Calgary, Edmonton, Seattle, or Anaheim. A couple of them have to like beat out the Canucks the rest of the way. If the Oilers are going to catch the Canucks, they need to get, they need to gain 14 points on the Canucks the rest of the season. There's seven games back. Six and a half, I guess, if you're uh, if you're doing the math, because the Canucks will play one more game. The Canucks have a six and a half game lead on Edmonton. They have a five and a half game lead on Calgary. Just twelve games into the season. I, I don't know what else I can say about that. They are they have put themselves in the driver's seat, and it it would take a real disaster to fall out of at this point. They can afford a bad stretch, right? Because the teams below them have been so bad, right? It's uh it's a great place to be. Uh, I have some uh we have some some super chats here. I will jump to these here. Um we have almost 200 people in here, by the way. Thank you all for joining. Uh, sorry that Clay's not here. Make sure you subscribe, by the way. Hit the like button. We're gonna try to push the 2k subs. Let's uh let's hit that sub button if you haven't already. Carol asks, what is your thoughts on Myers play of late? Uh Tyler Myers has been pretty good in a reduced ice time role. He has been quite quite good um he is playing a much simpler game i think he's been sitting down with adam foot sergey gonchar i mean what guys to have leading your defensive core right i think he sat down with them and they said hey you're going to play less ice time you're going to play a simpler game you can go on the occasional rush if you want to but just don't get beat right meyer's biggest sin was over committing to things right there's the plays where he just you see him just slide right through the frame on a defensive play um, you know, or he'll, he'll like almost make a pinch and then bail in the last second. Like he just needs to be simple and confident. That's all that Tyler Myers needs to do. Uh, and he's been doing that as of late. Um, absolutely. Uh, he's, he's been a lot better. I think he's the worst defenseman on the team currently like on this roster. I think Mark Friedman's outplayed him a little bit. Uh, but Tyler Myers is now fitting into that role that they need him to fill in. Uh, and I think that's been very, very, very good. Thank you very much for the uh, for the five dollars. Much appreciated. Uh, Lucas with a fourteen dollars super chat. Thank you very much, Lucas. Um, won't be staying tonight. Heading out from Rogers Arena. Uh, hope you enjoyed the game. But I will say this: this team is good. That is all. Keep it the great work, Parker. I did see Clay on the jumbotron tonight. Yes, Clay did make his way onto the jumbotron. Uh, good on him. Uh, apparently, he uh, he sent me a text. He's like, I was on the screen. <laughs> it was great. Um, yeah, the team is good. I mean. It's tough to it's tough to win nine out of twelve, win four straight against some you know against a couple of decent teams like Dallas and Edmonton, and you, you're not doing that if you're not good. You're just not. Um, I yeah, they've been playing such a more structured game. They've been playing such a harder style to play against, and they just haven't given up. Right? 
they have they've just been dominating second periods. It doesn't matter if they're down a goal, if they're up a goal, they go out in the second period, they take it to the team and they expand, they get the lead or they expand it. And that's been absolutely critical. Um yeah, they've they've just been playing so well. I mean, I doubted Rick Tockett a lot. When the Canucks hired Rick Tockett, I thought, you know, ah, he's you know, he's sort of a brute, he's the tougher guy. Um, I have been so impressed by Rick Tockett. The way that he like you just like I'll just listen to his press conferences. You know, the 12 minute press conference today, this morning, uh, that I just listened to. And it's like, you know, you, you think, oh, they, they hired Rick Talk. He's going to be like tough. He's gonna be like, oh, we got to hit people. We got to, uh, but he like, he, he speaks very well. He, and he talks about the skill factors of the game, right? He's talking about, you know, he's talking about how this, the structure they need to play with, how we need guys to play in the offensive zone. And it's not just about, you know, being physical and hard to play against. It's about winning and having structure and not getting too high, not getting too low. You know, we can be on a, a good winning streak. We can be eight, two and one going into this game, but it's another day. It's, it's business like, um, and he's got this team working in a way that they haven't like this core we thought might be rotten, right? The, um, they get rid of a Horvat. I don't know how much that has to do with this. Uh, Philip Ronick has been great by the way. Um, but the core seemingly is okay. <laughs> you know, the, the core is not rot rotten. JT Miller has stepped into a leadership role in a way that I didn't expect him to. Quinn Hughes, the C apparently gave him superpowers. And he's got, he's tied. He's second in the league for points. Quinn Hughes, he's got 20 points. He's tied with Jack. Jack's obviously hurt, which sucks, but Elias Pettersson, first in the league in points. Quinn Hughes, first or second in the league in points. Thatcher Demko, first in the league in save percentage. I mean, what can you ask for more than what this team is giving us right now? Uh, I think I had one more uh, Spartan, $2. Thank you very much saying we only lose to real teams like the Flyers. I mean, yeah, not ideal uh, looking back on that one. Uh, that was a bad game, but I think it was a wake-up call. I, I, I genuinely think so, right? They've lost three games this year. They lost to the Flyers, that 2 nothing loss where they played bad, and they lost to the Lightning, back-to-back -back games. They lost two. They were 2-2 two and two at that point, right? And the Canucks have now won seven of their last eight, and they have looked good in all of them, essentially. They beat the the Panthers, the Preds, and the Blues, and they they beat the Blues handily. And then they get a, a scheduled loss, and they do lose, but they get a point out of it against the Rangers. Like that is the epitome of what this team is doing. And what did they do? They just kept it rolling. Five two against the Preds, ten one against the Sharks, two nothing against the Stars, six two against the Oilers. They're winning these games, and they're not even close. Like they are taking it to these teams in a way that we absolutely didn't expect them to. And I, uh, I, I can't, I don't have enough good things to say. Uh, let's take a look at the schedule coming up here. Uh, we will have three games before the next Canucks after dark. Clay should be back for Monday, the 13th. Uh, it's a day off for, I, I assume most of you, it is for me. Um, so we'll have a good show that night. Uh, they're on the road, Eastern road trip coming up three games on the road. They've got Ottawa, a team that they should beat. Ottawa has struggled. Uh, there's, there's calls for their coach's head at this point. They were expected to be better this year, Ottawa. They're four and six. They've got eight points. They've lost their last two. Positive goal differential, but that doesn't matter. Um, the Sens haven't been looking good. The Canucks need to just go out, take care of business in that one. Saturday, 4 p.m., Maple Leafs. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's national TV. That's, that's the chance to showcase your team to the Eastern audience. The Maple Leafs have looked shaky also. I mean, they're six, four and two on paper. They like, they're doing fine. Their game today against the lightning. They looked abysmal. They're down four, one. They did come back and win an OT, but that's a team that is they're floundering right now. Their goaltending has not been good either, right? This is a team that Canucks can put up a lot of goals on. They've been allowing a lot of goals. They, they won today, six, five, they lost six, four to the Sabres. They've allowed 42 goals this year. That's tied for most in the Eastern conference. So if the Canucks can come out firing, uh, they can definitely beat the Leafs in that one. And then they get the Habs back-to-back -back nights. They play the Habs at 4 p.m. The Habs are also on a back-to-back. -back. Keep that in mind. That's big for the Canucks because the Habs are coming off of a game against Boston. Uh, so no team gets extra rest. Uh, the Canucks have a little bit of travel, Toronto to Montreal. Um, but the Habs are struggling. To, and they've been okay. They're 5-4-2. and two, But they've lost their last three. They were looking a lot better. They've lost their last three. Uh, the Canucks can can definitely put up some goals on this team also. Um, and I would really love to see that. 
So looking at these three games coming up, I mean, I want to see your predictions. You know, how uh, how many of these three, what's the Canucks record when we come back next week? Is there nine, two and one now? Are they 12, two and one? Are we talking about a miraculous start? Do they have a little hiccup? You know, maybe they're 10, four and one. You know, the, the back-to-back game can be a little scary. Toronto can be a little scary. Again, I, I'm believing in this team, but my heart is not ready to be like, oh yeah, three and oh, let's, there's going to be a hiccup. There's going to be a hiccup and it's, it's going to be, how do they bounce back from that hiccup? Is that hiccup imminent? I, I, I don't know. Right. Who's to say, um, but if they can get through this stretch, right, you got Ottawa, Toronto, and Montreal, they should absolutely win two of these three games. And knowing them, they'll lose, they'll beat the Maple Leafs, they'll lose to the Habs, right? Who knows? Um, but hey, if the Canucks win two out of these three, that'll put them at like 11, three, and one. Fine by me. Totally happy with that. And then they get another bit of an interesting stretch because then they get the Islanders. Uh, Bo Horvat's return to Vancouver. The Islanders have been kind of middling. They get the Flames. The Flames haven't been good. They get the Kraken. The Kraken haven't been good. Then they get the Sharks. <laughs> Uh, and then they get the Avs, which is going to be tough. But then they get the Kraken and the Sharks and the Ducks all in a row. I mean, the Canucks really, if they can keep this up, if they don't get too high on themselves, and if they you know, keep playing their game the way they've been playing, and Thatcher Demko continues to be fantastic, this team can really put together a big gap in the standings. And uh, I really hope that they do. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go over to the chat over here. Uh, we got some calls from Magnum saying that Tyler Myers is a plus 10. Uh, absolutely. Uh, three and O three and O JC Van Dam saying 12, two and one for three and O Thomas Smith, 11, two and two. So two O and one, I'd be very happy with that. Also, uh, Irwin says two and one, uh, AMD says easy schedule. A eh? thing is coming into the season, we wouldn't have thought these were that easy, right? Like Ottawa, man, they're going to be, they're sort of similar levels with the Canucks coming in, but the way the Canucks have been playing can't uh i i mean i i don't know what to say antagonist is knock on wood uh whoops i lost it i'll knock right now wood has been knocked sarah says canucks and vegas will be the ultimate test uh yeah that'll be that'll be a hard game that'll be a hard game but if they can find a way to win that that is huge uh let's see if we can find uh oh i want to talk about one more thing uh let's talk about the goaltending going into that tan or that back-to-back uh, and by the way, while you're here, now is a great time to get in some questions. We'll take a handful for about 15 minutes or so before we wrap up. Uh, so get your questions in now while we talk about uh, what I would do. Or let's will we do some brainstorming. Because the Canucks have two nights off. They have to travel to Ottawa. I imagine they'll travel tomorrow and just stay You know, the extra night. Maybe they travel Wednesday uh, and you know stay the night in Ottawa. Um, Saturday against Toronto. Sunday against Montreal. Demko will get one. DeSmith will get the other. Demko's the hot goalie right now, and you have two days of rest. There is also the issue of you don't want DeSmith to get too cold, right? You do want to get him into action. Do I think one day matters that much? Not really. Because the Canucks also have another back-to-back the following week, right? They play Thursday, then Saturday, Sunday, and then Wednesday, Thursday. So they play basically back-to-back, Back to backs, and they have another back to back um, the following week or two weeks after that as well. So DeSmith is going to get some games. Um, I, I think you just you don't overcomplicate things. I think you put in Demko on Thursday because he's hot. You put in Demko Saturday because it's the Maple Leafs, unless he's tired or anything like that. Uh, and then you you have DeSmith on the Sunday because you're going to get the you're going to get the Habs back up on Sunday also, uh, and that should be uh, you know that should be an advantage for the Canucks. Um, because yeah, then you have the Islanders on Wednesday and then the flames on Thursday. And I think, yeah, I think you put in DeSmith maybe against the Islanders as well. And then you, you put in Demko against the flames because divisional games are a little bit more important. Um, but we'll see what the Canucks do. All right, folks, let's get to some questions and we're going to start with really the big one fangirl. Is this team a contender or a pretender? If you asked me this last week, I would have said probably a pretender. And I know that's, and and it's just because, you know, five, two and one, it's a, it's a good start, but like teams can get hot. Right. But man, the way this team played over this last week is so different than we've seen them play historically. Like again, you can look at the analytics and and I totally get it. Right. The, The PDO, the Canucks have PDO is essentially how many of your shots are going in versus how many other team shots are going in. The Canucks PDO is like 110 as in like, 
14 or 15 percent of the Canucks shots go in the net, but only like six percent of the opposing team's shots go in the net, which isn't really going to sustain itself for the re- for the whole season unless you have like fantastic goaltending. But usually it's only like a couple percentage points um, like that's unsustainable. However, their style of play isn't right. It's un- being nine, two and one is unsustainable. Um, but their style of play is so playoff like adjacent, like the way that they're playing just gives me so much confidence. And it, like I said, it's something that we really haven't seen from them before that I can't help, but think that this team, I don't know if they're a contender, like, are they winning the cup this year? I don't think so. Right. Like usually teams make the playoffs a couple of times. They need that playoff experience uh, before they get something going and maybe Rick talking something special. And they can go on a little bit of a run, but I, I don't think that they're a contender. I mean, on the standings, they are, <laughs> um, I think this team probably ends up, I, I know I always said between third and fifth in the Pacific, I think they could finish second in the Pacific. Uh, I don't think they're catching Vegas. I think Vegas is too good, but this is a team that could, you know, they could win around. They could ease. They could win around. They might actually be playing against a wild card team in the first round of the playoffs. So they keep this up, right? They could absolutely win around. And then maybe, you know, maybe they make the second round. Interesting. They, they absolutely have the ability to have a bit of a run if they keep this up all year. And, and the thing is my tone might completely change game 40 of the season. If the Canucks have won 26 games, maybe 28 games. Okay. I'm on board, right? If they're, if they're on pace to put up like 107 points, then I'll get on board. I'll get on board the contender train. I just don't know if I'm ready to do that yet. Again, it's only 12 games, um, but man, they've been, uh, they've been playing great. They've been playing very, very good. Um, Antagonist says, do you see the Canucks making a big trade soon? We've heard a, a little bit of rumor mill around, you know, are the Canucks, you know, going to try to reward their team for playing well, right? Are they going to be like, hey, you know, you guys have earned us adding pieces. It scares me a little. Again, it's early um, and you almost don't want to mess with the room at this point. Um, but the Canucks are a defensive injury away from collapse, right? Uh, if knock on wood, knocking a lot of wood, if Demcourt to Smith goes down, the Canucks have a problem, right? Not as big of a problem because the other, like both goalies are playing great, but they have a bit of a problem. If any defenseman goes down, if Mark Friedman goes down and we're slotting in Noah Juleson, I think the Canucks have a bit of a problem, right? The Canucks are very dependent on health behind the front 12. You know, you can have guys like Bluger go down. They've had front end injuries quite a bit, um, but they they can't afford a defensive injury. So maybe they do. Maybe they try to add a bit of depth defensively, right? Whether that is an Ethan Bear in December. I mean, we're only like a month or two away from Ethan Bear being, you know, playable. And it sounds like they might want to make that connection. I'd be on board with that because the Canucks need some defensive depth. Uh, if it's going out and making a trade for Chris Tanev, which seems really unlikely to me, uh, you know, Alvin doesn't have that like, relationship with Chris Tanev that Jim Benning did, for example, um, relationship. Um, but I mean, adding a Chris Tanev to this team would be good, right? That would make this team better without a doubt. Uh, this is whether it's just how you make that work, right? What are you giving up to do that? Um, are you mortgaging a lot of your future and maybe shortening your window? Because this team can't afford to shorten a window. You want your window to be as long as possible. Um, but maybe, maybe it would be interesting. Tyler says is Besser being shopped. Not a chance right now. Not a chance. Besser is a the team's too. The team's not selling anybody right now. They're nine two and one. Uh, Besser's been playing so well. You know, sure, like some of the goals have been a little fluky, but I mean, he's got he's on pace for like sixty something goals this year. Uh, Besser is Besser's not going anywhere. Um, Spartan asks, is Phil Giuseppe a real second liner? I don't think so. I think he's found some really good chemistry with Miller and Besser. Uh, he got shelled a bit tonight. Uh, I think at one point and I'll see if I can, I'll find his on ice stats at five on five. Let's see. Uh, he was on the ice for, uh, 26 shots or 26 shot attempts against and only out for eight for the Canucks at five on five. Um, that's not great, right? He didn't have a great night tonight. Uh, that whole line really didn't except for Miller and Besser capitalized on the power play. Um, I don't think he's, like second line caliber. He's, you know, he's, he's 30 and he's like finally playing, you know, full NHL ice time. Um, but he is fitting that role so well when they have guys who should be second liners that aren't right. Garland hasn't really stepped up. 
Um, Bavillier really hasn't stepped up. So for Philly Giuseppe to go and just be sort of a perfect fit there, I don't think he's a second line skill level player, but I think he's fitting in with Miller and Besser so well that he's elevating them and becoming worth it being on that second line. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, she asks, is there a top four D man we can get to play with? Uh, Hugh, I assume that means Hughes. You said huge. He's not very big. Unless you mean Myers because he's huge. Either way, um, I'm really liking Hughes with Hronik. I don't really want to mess with that. I think if you can get a top four D man to play with like Cole, uh, or Susie, I mean, I'm good with that. Um, if you can get any D man at this point, they need some depth. Um, Kai says, would you be fine if the Canucks trade a first round pick if they keep this up for the next 10 to 15 games? I don't want to trade prospects like the Karamaki, uh, Ratu, or Villander. I would like another chronic type trade. Would I be fine with it? If they keep this up for, let's say they keep this up for 15 games, right? And they are 27 games of the year. And let's say they've won 20, right? Like, let's say they are on a, on a heater and they're on like 115 point pace. It still feels early. If this team is rolling as well as they are and they're staying healthy, I don't think you really do much until close to the trade deadline. I don't think there's really a rush, right? They're not, you know, I don't, I just don't, I don't see the rush to like jump in and, and, and make that move 25 games into the season when you can make that move 45 games into the season and maybe have a better idea of not only who you are, but what you need, right? how this team's playing now might not be the way they're playing in 45 games, right? Maybe, you know, maybe they have an injury that they need a hole that they have a hole that they need to fill 45 games to the season. You know, maybe then you have a little bit more information to make that move on. And I think that might be a little bit more useful. So I would, I would prefer if they waited. Um, let's see what else we've got. Uh, Kai says, hear me out. Imagine Myers plays amazing the next few months and we actually flip him. A guy with his profile I wouldn't be surprised if we got something decent. I don't see, again, if the Canucks are winning, I don't see them removing pieces, especially on the back end. Sure, his cap, it's high, and maybe you can replace that somehow. Um, and it would be nice to get something for Tyler Myers because uh, he's going to be a UFA. I just I don't see them removing uh, place uh, pieces in that, uh, in that case. It just seems really unlikely to me. Um, and I don't know if I'd want them to. Again, if this team is if this team's rolling, let's roll. You know, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun for once. Um, <laughs> Fangirl says, "Let's get 100 likes on the stream." Great point, Fangirl. By the way, let's get some. Uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button while you're here. I'm going to do a quick little check, quick little check on you guys. We're at 1594. I mean, let's just get to 1600, right? If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. We maybe even even push like 1650 because I bet a lot of you haven't subscribed. So hit that subscribe button if you have not already and the like button while you're here. Uh, thank you all, of course, very much for joining. Um, Antagonist says, we saw a couple of shifts where he's with Myers tonight. Yeah, we saw a lot of defensive shuffling tonight uh, when the Canucks started bad, right? Um, shout out to the D coaches, right? I think it was Gonchar maybe in the lead on that where he just, you know, the D wasn't playing well. They were getting a shot 19 to two. They mixed things up a little bit. They got on the ice and score. Fantastic. Uh, Tyler Myers says, you can always count on me. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tyler Myers. Um, let's see. Viper says there's not many right demon are in the league that are available. That is true. That's why, you know, even though Ethan bear might not be like super high profile, I, I would like to, uh, to make that move. Um, Darth says, I'd be willing to trade Ratu in a third if we can get some cap relief and upgrade our right ND. Yeah, Ratu, I mean, he's got that high like prospect pedigree, but I went to the Abbotsford Canucks game on Friday. He really didn't stand out uh, against one game. I'm I'm not very high on Ratu right now, uh, and I think if they made a move on on him to get some, you know, some right-handed defenseman help, I, I really wouldn't hate that. I really wouldn't hate that. Um... Viper says, I wonder if they re-sign Myers for like two and a half a year. I think there's got to be better options. And I think this team has, I think this management group has shown they're sort of savvy in picking up guys for low cost, right? They're not doing the Jim Benning, Antoine Roussel, Jay Beagle deals where they're giving guys $3 million a year. Brandon Sutter, they're giving like, what are they giving four? Um, they go out, they get Ian Cole, one year, 3 million bucks. They go get Carson Soucy. They go out and they get, 
um, uh, Sam Lafferty for pretty cheap. They go out and like Pew Suter for pretty cheap. Teddy Bluger, who we haven't really seen yet, for pretty cheap. They they really built up this team with a bunch of cheap, good depth because they have the star power. They have Quinn Hughes, Leas Patterson, Brock Besser, JT Miller. They have the star power. They needed the depth to come up and they really have, right? Philly Giuseppe. I mean, sure, that was a that was a bending move, but you know, hey, this staff put him up there and, and found a spot for him with Miller and Besser. So I don't think they would do Myers for two and a half a year. I think they'll find a better option uh, on someone that they might have a bit higher upside on. Um, Reneal says, great energy in the building. Or Ron, yeah, Reneal. Is there? That's an L. Uh, sorry, I'm small screen over here. Uh, Product on the ice surely helps. Uh, way to go, Canucks Nation. Yeah, it, lo- it sounded like a great time in that building. It sounded like it was bumping on a Monday night nonetheless, right? That's a thing that we have not seen in a while uh, in the last few years. So absolutely love to see it. Um, what else do we got? Um, Taylor says, have you noticed the boys have been posting a lot more on their stories after the wins and photos of them? They've also been winning a lot more. It helps. Um, but yeah, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure they're having a little bit more fun. Um, and, uh, Darth Nutella saying Alvin has proven that he knows how to navigate the cap better than Benning ever did. And that's very true. That's sort of what I was just alluding to. That has been a big, big difference maker for this team has been, not just blowing a bunch. Then they they couldn't have blown a bunch of cap on a bunch of guys, right? They they didn't have the money to do it. Really, their biggest move has been Mikheyev, right? Um, at least like spending wise. So it's working out. They they went and they got a bunch. They sort of moneyballed it, right? They got a bunch of depth guys who weren't expensive that they thought could be you know great additions and and work together. And it really has worked out. Um. Thomas is actually the Rutherford effect. Viper saying it's uh, Emily Caston gay. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who it is, but whoever it is, is doing a pretty good job. Uh, Odwanzi saying Quinn, 100 point season. It's not, it's not out of the cards. He's got 20 points in 12 games. Like he's, he's on pace for it. He's on pace for more than it. he's on pace. Let's go that 130, 140 points. I, what a start for him. Uh, like that's, that's Norris. All, if he puts up hundred points, that is Norris all day, all day. He puts up 90 points. He's going to be looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, Thu asks, if the Canucks are in the playoffs and they play set, uh, Vegas in the second round and they win, do you think they can make a run? I mean, yeah, then you, I mean, you've, you've won two series, right? Of course you can make a run because you just got to, again, you can, you can have Demko get hot for a series. You can have Elise Pettersson get hot for a series like Ryan Kessler did against Nashville. I like, you know what I would expect to see? I would see JT Miller take over a couple of games. I would not be surprised to see that in the playoffs. He seems like they're exactly the right kind of guy for that. Um, I would uh, I would not be surprised if the Canucks could uh, just you know steal a few games. Vegas in the second round, if they can pull that off, that's big. I I wouldn't be betting on them probably, but yeah, if, if in your scenario that you've put together here, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be possible. Um. Brandon asks, who's the best forward in the league right now? It's Connor McDavid. I mean, not like right now he's been bad. Uh, sure. Uh, Elias Patterson's playing better than anyone though. Uh, I mean, Jack Hughes too. Uh, I think it's, I mean, right now you're looking Art Ross wise or Hart wise. It's Hughes and Patterson, Jack Hughes, Elias Patterson. Um, but Hughes is hurt, unfortunately. And that sucks. It sucks when, when some of the best players in the league are hurt, especially when they're not in our conference. Right. And we don't have to worry about them, you know, putting up a bunch of numbers on us. Um, you know, you want to see those guys play. Uh, Daskrin says, is Hronik who we based the Horvat trade on or Ratu? It's Hronik for sure. Uh, that was the pick. Um, Anfamous has been watching the Canucks since the mid 90s and this is for the best team I can recall. Now their record reflects it too. I would disagree with that um, because that 2011 team would play such a dominant style where they would sit back and just like, They'd play basically, they, they would just Muhammad Ali it, right? They, they would rope a dope these guys where they would just allow them to have all the pressure. And maybe it's like one, nothing. They'd go out in the second period. They'd go out, they just score two goals and shut it down. Like they, they had so much control over the game in those years. Uh, this team is not that right now, um, but they have the, they seem to have the potential to be more defensive depth and the, and they can get close. Um, all right. We are at the 50 minute mark. I think I'm going, we have almost 250 people in here, by the way, which is absurd. Uh, I'm sad that Clay isn't here, Um, but folks, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, I think we're going to wrap up there. 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Parker's Pucks. My YouTube channel at Parker's Pucks is right at the corner of 4,000 subscribers. I'd love if you jumped over there if you uh, haven't seen me before. Um, folks, the, the Canucks got some big games ahead of them. Uh, they can they can genuinely be near the top of the conference by the end of next week if everything goes right. Uh, I really appreciate you all stopping by. It is an absolute blast covering this team right now. Um, night in, night out. Just having fun watching hockey having fun talking to you guys. It is a blast. So make sure you're subscribed, hit the notification bell. We're here every Monday at 10 o'clock, except this one was obviously an exception because of the game. Um, Otherwise, uh, yeah, it was, uh, what what a great night. What a great night. What a great week. What a great week. Let's have a good November. Have a good night, everybody. I'll see you next time.